Hey friends, we're learning C-sharp. We have learned about strings, we learned about numbers, we've learned about string interpolation and console.writeLine. Now we're gonna put it all together. We've got branches and loops, but we haven't really talked about data. The only yeah. data we had was really strings. strings. Yep. Right? When you have data, you put it into lists. And things are gonna little, get a little intense right now, but I'm excited to show it to you. We're gonna learn about managing data collections using list of T. So let's take a look at our screen here. We're inside of the C-sharp tutorial at Microsoft Learn, and I want to point out this right here. List, it's pronounced list of T. List of T, that's right. right. Now, the way I remember that, David, and this is like a classic bit of humor, is I remind myself of a cup, oops, cup of T. <laughs> that would be pronounced cup of T. Okay, and it's a very you, C sharp thing to do. It is a very C sharp thing to do. And if you go out actually, and uh, Google with Bing for like a mug cup of tea, you can actually find examples online of folks with a cup of tea mug, <laughs> right? Because that's saying you're a C-sharp programmer and you like a cup of tea. <laughs> yep. Now, what does tea mean? Tea is a type. And we're gonna have a list of stuff. So it's gonna be a little bit confusing, but you're gonna help me understand all of this together, yeah, right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, this tutorial talks about the list of T class. We have our machine set up for local development using Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna do a basic example. So I'm just gonna copy paste this directly over, and we're gonna introduce some new concepts. But remember, it's okay because we know strings, we know ints, we know for loops, so we're gonna survive. I pasted this in. Let's see what we have here that is new. Whoa. Yeah, there's <clears throat> a lot going on. We've talked about integers, we've talked about Strings. I see a string there. What's a var? What's Aha! A var? So remember how I said you have to be explicit in C sharp? Right. You said it over and over for yeah. a dozen videos. You've been saying it's the most important thing. Maybe I lied. <laughs> <laughs> you do, and you should. Mm -hmm. um, var is called local variable type inference. Local variable type inference. It's a lot of words, but what it really means is I can just use the word var. And if C Sharp can figure out what the other side is, it can just infer it. It can just declare something All right. on so, your behalf. So hang on a second. That means before, when you had me going uh, string name equals Scott, and I thought I was being explicit by saying string name, I could just say var. That's right. And if I say var, and I hover over that, how does it know? that it's a string. Yeah, it, it knows because it has the idea of a default type for var. So the right hand side has to be enough, has to have enough information for the compiler to know what the left hand side should be. So I have a string there, it's clearly a string, you know it's a string, I know Correct. it's a string. It's got quotes around it. Right. So I bet you then, if I change Scott to the number three, yep. It, it could have been a double or right. a decimal or whatever, but an int is a reasonable assumption. Correct. Oh, okay. Or so, you can say like 3f. Oh, and then and say... And then it should infer float. And right? it did. Right. So if, if you think about the other pattern where you declare a float and you put the wrong number in and you've got a squiggle, you, mm -hmm. you got an error. This is the other approach where you tell the compiler, hey, just use the right type. And on the right side, I'll just say what that type is. Do we like var or do we not like var? I love var. Okay. Like is too, too, too. <laughs> we love var. You var is marry great. Var, maybe? <laughs> okay. But there, there, is a, there is a school of thought um, saying if the right hand side isn't explicit, then don't use var. Okay. Right. If the right side is not explicit. So let's return back to list, which is our new concept. That makes me feel like you said var names equals new list. Of, of T. string, uh, and I always say that. I always go like this, list this is of. of string. I don't know why I do that. Um, that makes me feel like maybe what I need to do is take list string and put it over var. Oops. Right. So it'd be like this. Right. So consider this is correct and accurate and explicit, but it feels like you, you said the same thing twice. So I want a list on the left-hand side. And then on the right hand side, you're saying, okay, well, remember that thing I declared on the left hand side? 
Put I it see. again on the right-hand so side. So you're already here. You're like, remember how I wanted a list of string like yeah. two seconds ago? <laughs> exactly. Give it to me. So you're basically getting rid of some repetitiveness. That's right. Right there. Okay. So we have a list of string. And then inside here, I'll just put Scott instead of name. Okay. There's a lot going on here. We have a new keyword here called new. Right. Where we are newing up. We say newing up an item, or we are creating or constructing an item. Who would say newing as a verb besides programmers? Only programmers. We're creating an object. <laughs> right. Right. We're making a list. Right. But someone might say, if they're sitting with you as a pair yeah. programmer, go ahead and new up. New up. New up a list. So yep. we've newed up a list of string. <laughs> so we made a list of string. Yep. We are now, we know that names, and we can actually hover over names. And again, the dev kit is telling us that it's a list of string. That's right. We'll talk a little bit about this later. It's saying it could be null, might be nothing, but right now it's something. And then we've got these curly braces again. Does, does white space matter? Nope. So we have a list. We are initializing or creating a list of stuff right here. So names now has three names in it. That's right, three okay. strings. And I could go and say control shift P, format document, in this case, it doesn't really care because there's nothing interesting to format there. Yeah. But that can be all on one line or it can be however you want. Yep. Now, could I do a for loop? I just learned how to do for loops five minutes ago. You can. You could. It wouldn't be you know, designed for this purpose of trying to give you every single entry in a list. It can count things and you can use those concepts to also do the same thing, like print every single um, object in the list. Okay. If you use a for loop, you have to understand the list structure a bit more. If you use for each, it has a general way of kind of expressing, I'm going to loop over every single entry in this list. Okay. Right. So if I wanted to do that, it's a whole thing now. Yeah. I got to go names dot count. Dot count, right? Yeah. Which I, I thought it would be length, but it's exactly. not. Exactly. It's not, it's not length for list. It's and count then I got to go uh, names, names, and then I have to do what's index. called indexing. It's a whole thing. <clears throat> right. So you have a choice then, you're saying. Yep. You could do that, which is a for loop. Which is functional and it works. Indexing into a list of names, which is like right. a whole thing we haven't learned about yet. Or I can just say for each name. Right, exactly. Okay. Now I'm looking here on this one that says for each name in names, which feels good in my mouth. Is this a coincidence that one is plural and one is singular? Conventionally, yes. Um, C sharp does not require you to call the the first var a singular version of the expression, but by convention, most of the loops you'll see with for each mm -hmm. will be for eaching over a collection, a list, an array, or whatever, and you declare each entry as the, the singular form of that list. So, for each name in names, name is one entry at a time. You'll print out hello Scott, hello Anna, hello Felipe. I see. So order. I could say for each people in, or for each person in people. That's right. But could I say for each I in names? Yeah, you can. Because you said I was a thing, but now it doesn't kind of look cool. Looks weird. <laughs> Still functions, you know, so C sharp doesn't care about your naming or variables. But when you're learning programming, I would recommend making your variable names as, you know, expressive as possible. So you, so you as a human, can see the code and understand it better, right? That's a great point. It's okay to have descriptive variables. And yeah. that's a very, for each name and names is nice. And then we see var here again. Names we will recall is a list of string. And name is a string. That's right. So it's for each string in this list of strings. That's right. Okay, cool. And then we saw two things here. We have string interpolation. And we're calling two upper on this. And you said it's immutable, so we're actually getting a, a new copy, string. a new string right. coming out of that. And the result looks great. It's hello, shouty friend, <laughs> in all caps. Yeah. All right. So that is working through list. Let's uh, make a couple of modifications before we move and take a break. Here with lists, we have these extra methods that are hanging on top of them, like add and remove. So this is interesting. Let's go back over here and let's add a friend, names, dot. Look at that. Mm. Those ads popped up, right? Those, uh, those stars, rather. 
indicating that add something I'd want to do. Let's add in David. Yay. And then let's add in, and we'll say Damien. And then we'll say names dot, oops, dot add Maria. So we have, uh, did I have to make any more memory or how I know the string is going to get more? Because So the list just to grows some... as you add more things to it. It does the right thing and, and it grows the internal storage as you add more things to it. Um, one thing I would note here is that unlike strings, you were changing the data inside of the names variable. Mm -hmm. Unlike strings, where strings were immutable, list is not immutable. Mm. That's a really great point because we saw before if I said something like dot replace or dot to upper, it returned a new one. Here, I'm actually changing that. Yep. Okay. If All you right. zoom in a little bit to that, hover over names and zoom in again, sorry, on, on add, you'll see it returns this void, which means there's no result from this call. You call add and it changes the actual memory. Adds an object to the end of the list. Correct. Okay. And what is it complaining about here? It's saying it's that trying to say you can use fancy new C sharp twelve syntax to simplify all these calls. Okay. Oh, so that's funny. You know what it just did? Is it <laughs> said, "Well, I just saw you make three of them. <laughs> I just saw you make three. Yep. Now you're adding them manually. You know, we could just do them like this. Yep. Which is fine. But we're learning, so we're going to keep exactly. it like keep that. Exactly. Keep that for now. Yep. Isn't that cool? All right. We are learning all about lists of T. We're going to take a short break. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into putting all of these things together, adding conditionals and loops and lists all together.